even if you don't subscribe to this this idea that the Chinese and U.S. oligarchies are working together or what what have you, at any rate, things like the Financial Stability Board and, and these white papers, these are real phenomena that are happening. And if we don't know about them, that's very much to our detriment because there really needs to be some sort of way that we can have some sort of determinative power over these types of policies if we want to have any say over what's happening in the international economic and financial structures. And uh, at this point, particular time that's demonstrably not happening. This video is brought to you by milesfranklin.com. If you are considering the ultimate financial insurance of physical precious metal ownership, Miles Franklin has been supplying it for the past 25 years. Rated A plus by the Better Business Bureau, it is well known for competitive prices and industry leading consumer service from brokers with on average two decades of experience. Not to mention, the industry's best financial blog offered each and every day for free. Whether you aim to buy, sell, or store precious metals, Miles Franklin promises to treat each consumer like family. They can be reached online at milesfranklin.com or by phone at 800-822-8080. Right, so the thing we need to do right now is to inform the public. So how should we go about doing this? Well, the ideal, of course, is at this particular juncture in history, we have this remarkable technology for disseminating information, something that has never been really uh, feasible, even thinkable before in human history, which is, of course, the Internet and the power that it uh, affords the average citizen to not only receive, but also send information instantaneously globally for next to zero price. Um, uh, the vast majority of the world's population is now online in one form or another, even if it's only by mobile device in uh, certain areas of the globe. But still, there are um, now literally billions of people interacting online in the world's largest uh, conversation, which has its uh, potential drawbacks and, uh, and there are potential downsides, but there are potential incredibly um, uh, empowering ways that we can work together to, for example, collaborate and share information and vet and source information and, uh, and participate in open source communities that – that, uh, that share the, the, the information and vet it and analyze it and discuss it. These types of conversations would have been literally unthinkable even a couple of decades ago. So we are at really a, a pretty amazing point in human history where we can counteract at least potentially the, uh, the machinations of a, a shadowy behind the power type of uh, oligarchy that, that is trying to enact these types of uh, agreements and regulations. However, having said that, of course, if the Internet is one of the, the, the sort of focal points for the dissemination of this information, then, of course, it is also going to be a, a focal point for the potential shutdown of the dissemination of this information. And it's interesting to note on this very point, as I did note in that uh, article that you're, you're referencing, China, China and the U.S. Frenem frenemies with benefits, uh, that recently in Washington, we just saw the seventh China US Internet Industry Forum that featured as a keynote speaker Lu Wei of the uh, Ministry of the Cyberspace Administration of China. And Lu Wei uh, is probably not familiar to uh, most of the listeners or most of the people in the Western world, but since taking over the, uh, the cyberspace uh, administration in China, he has been responsible for not only overseeing the, the Great Firewall of China, which, of course, I'm sure everyone knows about, which does some pretty amazing um, real-time censorship of the Chinese Internet so that uh, search results are, are automatically filtered and screened and etc. in real time. But also he's begun even extending the, the, the capabilities of this, this rather remarkable censorship uh, uh, regime to include a crackdown on social media, um, including uh, basically reining in very various celebrities and others on the Chinese social media that were in, in recent years beginning to start uh, various forms of political activism that were taking off in China. We've seen a crackdown on that recently. We've also seen the implementation of new rules uh, by which anyone uh, who is uh, uh, found to be spreading 
false rumors about the Chinese government, of course, false rumors as determined by the Chinese government, to uh, any anything over 500 followers online w- can be jailed for that uh, that offense. So uh, this is the the person who is now speaking at uh, international cooperation forums with the uh, the U.S. internet industry that is co-sponsored by um, the Microsoft uh, Corporation, of course, and the Internet Society of China, which is an interesting NGO um, that it works works with is supported by the Chinese government and actually has a uh, a self-disciplinary regulation um, that that they've they've put together which is basically a pledge um, that anyone who who signs this pledge will agree to censor you know their their internet in accordance with China's wishes etc cetera, etc cetera. you can read this actual pledge online and of course this is the exact pledge that is uh, adhered to by the Microsoft China and Yahoo China and Google China and all of these other Chinese branches of the U.S. internet industry. So we already see the cooperation going on between the U.S. and China on this precise note of internet uh, of the internet itself and the potential censorship of the internet. And we've seen in recent years people like Senator uh, Joe Lieberman calling for Chinese style internet uh, Chinese style censorship of the U.S. internet and the idea that the president should have a kill switch of the internet. Again, that's uh, Lieberman's words. So uh, we've already seen this idea starting to float that uh, there should be greater cooperation and even Chinese style censorship that is now an idea that is actually being floated by U.S. politicians. I think it's something we have to be concerned about if there really is a coordinated effort to uh, to basically merge the oligarchies of these various countries in this sort of globalization. And if the only way that we have to counteract this is the internet, I think we would be naive to think that the internet as it exists right now is a free f- uh, tool for, for dissemination of information is going to stay that way for very long. So besides the internet, are there other ways that we can help to get people informed? The, uh, the, the process of spreading information is uh, difficult. Um, I, I, I think the, uh, the, the idea in recent years that has been uh, obviously most, most, most obviously fostered on the internet, the, uh, the viral spreading of information, is a difficult thing to, uh, to predict or to promote. Uh, it's difficult to engineer that phenomenon, and it really does depend on the tastes and, and the fascination of the public. So it's difficult to say how, to, how best to disseminate this. Um, again, I think the internet is the technology for doing that, but uh, the the way that that will be done probably just depends on the various ways that people are able to process and internalize this information. There is going to be people out there who are going to put this in, in much uh, simpler language than I do and in a much more straightforward way that will appeal to more people. There will be others who are uh, who prefer to have their information in, in more of an academic or scholarly tone who might be interested in the work that I do. Uh, whatever it is, I, I hope that people who are interested in this information and do find nuggets of information that are useful in the work that I'm doing will help to spread that to others. But again, I can't possibly predict how that is going to take place specifically. All I know is that um, that if we do not get informed on these issues and the various organizations like the Financial Stability Board, like the IMF and their special drawing rights, all of these various mechanisms by which these oligarchies are merging, if we don't find this information, if we don't spread this information, if we don't become aware of it, there is no chance that we will ever be able to co- counteract the, uh, the narrative that's being constructed right now of this faux U.S.-China rivalry that is going to railroad us into a false narrative by which we will eventually arrive at that at precisely that form of globalization we've been talking about. Whether the U.S. side of this U.S.-China rivalry wins out and it becomes uh, an extension of the, the current Pax Americana, or if the Chinese side of this U.S.-China rivalry wins out and it becomes a, a brick-sled uh, Chinese-style new world order, quote unquote, then I, I think either way that it's it's still going to be the same oligarchy that is ultimately the power behind the throne and will ultimately benefit from the, the globalist institutions that result from that. So it, uh, I think we have to recognize that the real choice is not between Chinese style globalization or American style globalization. It's between people interacting uh, between each other in communities of interest, both online and offline. Uh, versus this idea of these these large, unaccountable international bodies that are going to be deciding things in closed-door meetings that you and I don't have any access to. 
Well, James Corbett, I wanted to really thank you for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers where they can find you and any last thoughts you might have? Well, the best way to find me is uh, my main website is CorbettReport.com. That's C-O-R-B-E-T-T Report.com. And if you just type China into the search bar, you'll find a number of different reports I've done, including that China and the New World Order podcast or the China and the U.S. uh, Frenemies with Benefits article that we've been citing. There's a lot of different uh, pieces to this puzzle. We've only scratched the surface of some of this information. So there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of links to, to more information for people who are interested. And perhaps the most important point of all of this is that I don't claim to be some sort of uh, god on high with the, all of the information. I see myself very much as part of a community, the Corbett Report community, that is attempting to consolidate and expand this information and analyze and vet it in that open source community idea that I was talking about earlier. So Corbett Report members are encouraged to log on to the website and to leave their own comments and ideas and, and links uh, to, to help expand this, this research project that is ongoing because there's awfully uh, an awful lot more information and a lot more pieces to this puzzle that need to be uh, to put together. But uh, again, I, th- I think that's sort of the work that uh, that I'm engaged in. And uh, again, I don't think I'm the be all and end all of this, but more of us have to be involved in this. And uh, so that's what I'm attempting to do at CorbettReport.com. Well, James Corbett, we really thank you for your time and for your efforts. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me on to talk about this subject. I really appreciate your time. Click here to subscribe for free to financeandliberty.com and also our sponsor, ReluctantPreppers.com, helping you be aware and prepared.